wine slang. So this is part two of the Pinot Noir video. Uh, right now it's two days after uh, I put the yeast into uh, the juice and we started fermentation. So it took about a day for it to really start to bubble and uh, ferment and right now it's uh, really going. So I'm just going to go through a a measurement of temperature and also just to show you what the airlock looks like when it's when fermentation is is going well so um, hold on one second we'll get there but as you can see the carbon dioxide is now uh, bubbling out um, into the into the airlock releasing the gas but not allowing any air back into it all right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop the lid, put the thermometer in, and actually for this, I think you could probably leave the thermometer in. Uh, it's probably the easiest thing to do is leave the thermometer in while it's fermenting. And that way you can just open the lid up, take your reading, and, and put the lid back on so you're not messing around with putting the lid back on, back off, or keeping the lid off for an extended period of time. So with that, whew. Smells like fermenting wine. So I'll put this in here. Oh. All right, it's been about ten minutes, so make sure we got a good good reading. Take this off. Take a reading. Let's see what it says. Degrees, 70, 78, 78 degrees. So, I'm going to leave that in there so we, get, so we can take quick readings. <clears throat> Just a thermometer, not going to do anything to the wine. Hey, welcome back. This is day 12 of the Pinot Noir. So um, it's supposed to be approximately a 14 day uh, fermentation cycle and but it's starting to slow down quite a bit um, like a lot actually. So over the last 12 days I haven't taken any measurements I was going to but I decided just to, there's no point. So let the fermentation run to you think it's about time to for it to be over and uh, then take the readings then. You might have to take it. I might have to take it today and maybe another one tomorrow to see, to make sure that the specific gravity is, is correct. So what we're gonna do now is take a sample, read a uh, hydrometer reading, set it flat on the table, no mistakes this time, and, uh, and see if we can go to the next step, which is uh, stabilizing and clearing. So what we need is we need a specific gravity of 0 0.998 or lower. All right, let's do it. We have the sample, and let's see here. Yeah, 1.00. All right, so 1.00, it's not done. It needs to be left for another day or two, so I'm going to Everything is sanitized. It smells pretty good. I'm going to pour some left. With just a tad to taste. Pretty mild. 
not too fruity. I don't know. Tastes like I could drink it right now, <laughs> but uh, but it's not at that level yet. So I'll try again tomorrow, and I think maybe tomorrow it'll be done. All right, we're back. It's been two days since I took the last reading on the hydrometer, which read uh, 1.00 specific gravity. So we're hoping for a 0.998 or lower on specific gravity. So here it goes. I don't have my um, cylinder test cylinder this time. I'm just gonna since this is a wide mouth, um, I'm just gonna drop it down, read it from there, which uh, can do. Might not get as accurate as looking at it straight on, but uh, but it'll, it'll do the job. I know I'm pretty close here, so. Let's do it. All right, so this is what it looks like. There's a bag of oak chips in there. And the reading I'm getting now is right down here. And if I pull it over here, I think we're right there. At so we're right at uh, 0.998, which is what we need to be. So the next step is racking into the carboy, and then mixing in all the other stuff, the um, sulfites to stop the make sure the fermentation is stopped, and then adding in uh, a few other um, additives to uh, help with clarification. So we'll be right back and uh, show you how that's done. All right, so here we are. We got the auto siphon with the tube attached, food grade plastic tube attached to the auto siphon, and that is going to go in there, and then. If you look down here, let's see here. We've got the carboy. Oh no, that's the that's the Berg. He's the uh, the mascot of uh, wine slug. But if you look over here, there we go, carboy. So I'll get some better pictures in a second as it's going. So there it is, entering the carboy, filling up nice and gently, and boom, it empties pretty quickly. So our mascot, he's uh, he's pretty thrilled. All right, now this is the empty bucket. You can see how the these at the bottom, the spent yeast and all that good stuff. This has been the best rack I've had out of the four wines I've done. This is the best because I've got it. I'll ha I'll have to add just a just a little bit of water when you get done with this. You want to add water up to about two inches from where the cork is. So I only have to add. A little bit of water that much sometimes in the past I've had to add like about a half a gallon of water which really I think the wine tastes good but I think it's a little bit diluted so uh, to the next step which is adding a sulfite and uh, the clarifying agents I'll be back in a sec <laughs> all right welcome back once again relegated to the cellar but uh, what I've got here is a sanitized spoon and my wine. So now it's, this is, there's four, uh, four things to add. First is sulfite, potassium sorbate, and then uh, two clarifying agents, which I'll talk about in a second. So first I add the sulfite, stir vigorously, add the potassium sorbate, Again, stir vigorously, and then after, actually after that, um, it's supposed to stir vigorously for about five minutes to degas the wine to get all the carbon dioxide out of the wine. Um, if you don't do that, supposedly it's, uh, the wine will clear as well. So there's better ways than using this. Um, I was going to buy one, um, but I didn't get to it. There's attachments that you can hook up to a drill, like a little whip almost, that you stick into the wine. That's food grade plastic. You attach it to a cordless drill and, and then you're done in a third of the time and 
know, sitting there for five minutes doing this. So that's not fun. I've done it a handful of times and I should have bought the attachment, but I didn't. So let's let's do it. Stir vigorously. See the foam? That is all the carbon dioxide coming out. After just a little bit. Uh oh. Got the foam over. And look, uh, good thing I got this. Uh, so, I guess always have a uh, towel handy just in case during this. Part. And do not do this on a rug. If you know we're sighting, kind of. Let's just do this just to get it over with. It's gonna spill a little bit. If you notice upstairs, I uh, <laughs> I'm transferring it from the primary fermentation tank to the carboy. I was doing it on my carpet. <laughs> Probably not the smartest thing to do. Uh, but I haven't spilled it yet, so um, probably next time I'll take it to the kitchen. All right, let's try this again. All right, now potassium sorbate. Stir vigorously. And I'll see you guys back in about five minutes after I've been stirring this for five minutes. All right, so I've degassed them away for more than five minutes because there was a lot of CO2 left in it, and there's still some left. But by adding these other two ingredients, the uh, kisalisol and the uh, Chit, uh, was it? Uh, Chitosan. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. Probably not. Anyway, when you add in these, you're gonna be stirring it up, and at the end, it says to stir again for five minutes to degas the wine. So let's uh, start after the we add the kislosol. We stir for a minute, and then we add the chitosan, and uh, there we have it. And we should be done after that. And with the kits, like I said, uh, they're easy. They spill everything out. This is uh, the previous packets of the potassium sorbate and the um, and the sulfite. Uh, the sulfite was out at first. That was labeled 2A. The potassium sorbate was labeled 2B. It's simple. The instructions tell you how to do it or what order to do and make sure that you don't mix up the orders so everything is labeled right it's easy easy peasy all right stir for a minute all right been stirring for a minute now we add the chitosan chitosan This stuff is kind of like gooey a little bit. You know, it doesn't say it, uh, and I haven't done it before. What I'm going to do this time is before bottling, I'm going to rack it to another carboy um, and then just let it settle out more because you'll see in part three of this video um, that. This gets a bunch of, again, um, sediment down at the bottom that, uh, that 
I don't want it in my wine bottles. So I'm probably gonna rack it one more time just to make sure that it's good to go. All right, stir for five minutes and then we're good. All right, there we go. We have finished the step two, video two of Pinot Noir. We've got everything in there to help settle it and clarify it. And to stop the fermentation, got the airlock on, and uh, we are ready to roll. We're done. That is um, the end of this chapter in the Pinot Noir. This sets for, supposed to set for another 14 days. And then uh, you're supposed to be able to bottle it because it's supposed to be clear by then. But like I said, I may or may not do that. Depends on how, depends on how, uh, how much sediment is down on, on the bottom of the, the cardboard. I may rack it again, let it sit for another week or so, and then pull it off into bottles. So we'll see. But it looks good. Uh, I have one fault, one major mistake I, I didn't make today is I didn't taste it. Forgot. Silly mistake. Silly. So, um, but I did taste it two days ago and it tasted pretty good. I would have liked to drink a whole glass then. So, I'm uh, thinking when we get to Bali and then uh, this is supposed to set for six, six to ten months before you drink it. I don't know if I'll be able to wait that long, but, uh, but we'll see. All right, so uh, slug on. See you next time.